Hello, good afternoon. So um, we have had a lot of families thrown into homeschooling and um, this is new for them. <laughs> and it can be scary. And um, I know that people don't know if they're equipped to handle it. They don't know if they have the time to handle it. They don't know if their kids are gonna cooperate with them. And so I just wanna tell you, we started homeschooling a year and a half ago. Um, we've been in private school, public school, and now homeschool. And all of those scary things were um, the same concerns that I had. Am I smart enough? Am I, do I have time to do this? Is my child gonna actually listen to me? Are we gonna like each other by the end of the day? Um, and those are probably concerns you had too, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I just wanna let you know, um, school should not take eight hours. Um, keep in mind when your students are at school with the teacher, there's normally 32 kids in that classroom or however, so that of course the days are longer. Um, we do not spend eight hours a day homeschooling. I work and homeschool. Um, there's many different programs out there, so you have to find the one that's right for you. We do a hybrid homeschool program, which means she goes to school two days a week and I homeschool three. Um, sometimes um, I homeschool Monday, Tuesday, and then we homeschool Saturday if we can't on Friday. So you can mix things up. We have um, uh, that flexibility. So I'm just gonna take you through a quick little um, history lesson that we're doing and you're gonna see. Um, hopefully this isn't too long, but all right, here we go. <clears throat> we happen to be in um, sixth grade um, heritage studies uh, history lesson. Um, and we're in right now learning about China and the history of China and different things. So um, you're getting kind of the end of a lesson, but this is our lesson today. So I'm gonna start off and um, sometimes she does the lesson by herself, depending on um, if she's able to, but I really like to be involved in the history and the science portion, but there are subjects that she does completely on her own. I do a quick, maybe a two minute intro for her and then she's off and running and um, I have the teacher guides so I'm able to check the work sometimes um, a lot of times I learn with her uh, and sometimes she teaches me um, more than I'd like to admit so achievements achievements the area of the Han was a glorious period in Chinese history the Chinese made achievements in medicine manufacturing science and literature. Medicine. The Han used special herbs as medicine. They also developed the use of acupuncture. This acupuncture is done by poking needles through the skin at specific points on the body. The purpose is to relieve pain or cure sickness. Some people today still use acupuncture. And you see down here, there's the ear and it has the needles and stuff where they do it. And so the model of the ear, it says with acupuncture points. So it's all labeled. Um, it's kind of small, but it says the three different sizes of acupuncture needles. I've never had it. I'm a little chicken, so you know I will probably never <laughs> get it done. Um, so manufacturing. China is also advanced in manufacturing. This increased the country's production of goods. The Chinese had become master metal workers. The iron plow and the wheelbarrow increased production on farms. Swords and armors made the army more powerful. The Chinese began using the rubber, a vertical blade. Ru I'm sorry, rudder. You began, they used the rubber and a rudder. No, okay. Uh, the Chinese began using the rudder, a vertical blade attached to a ship. The rudder could be turned to change the ship's direction. Ships traveled further, allow, allowing China to establish trade connections with other countries. For centuries, the Chinese had known the uh, procedures for making silk. The Chinese raised silkworms and unwound, uh, unwound the threads from the worms, cocoons. The threads were laid 
and woven into beautiful fabrics. The Chinese kept these um, procedures secret. Revealing the secret was punishable by death. Oh my gosh, can you imagine if I had you keep a secret and you didn't do it, so off with your head. Queen <laughs> <laughs> of hearts, off with your head. Off with your head. Okay, anyway, sorry about that. Okay, so during the, um, we do goof around a lot, don't yeah. we? <laughs> during the Han Dynasty, I don't know if it's Han or Han. I think it's Han. It's Han. It's Han. I'm just, um, you know what I mean. Okay, whatever. Blah. The Han Dynasty, weavers used foot-powered looms to weave the silk threads into fabric. Clothing made from silk was very expensive. It was originally reserved for the emperor and other important leaders. Science. A man named Cheng Heng, Cheng Hing, Cheng Hing invented an important scientific instrument called seismoscope. It was used to detect earthquakes. The Chinese called it an earthquake weather clock. Chinese seismoscopes were bronze jars decorated on the outside with eight dragon heads. Each dragon held a small ball in its mouth and pointed in one of eight different directions. Under each dragon sat an open-mouthed frog. Inside the bronze jar was a pendulum. Whenever the earth moved, the pendulum would move, causing one of the balls to drop from the dragon's mouth into the frog's mouth. The Chinese determined the direction of the earthquake by which frog the ball fell from. Or fell in. Earthquakes caused damage to buildings and land. After an earthquake struck, the Chinese leaders used the seismoscope to determine the earthquake's location. Then the leaders sent troops out to that area. The troops carried food and supplies to help people, particularly the farmers, whose work supported the entire country. Uh, literature. During the Han Dynasty, poets created long works of literature that combined poetry and prose? Pro prose, right? Mm -hmm. Prose. Another poetry style featured short lines of verse that could be sung. Poets were hired for the beauty of their verses. Han writers also created important works of history. Sima Chen. Sima Chen wrote a complete history of all the Chinese dynasties through the early Han. His writings were important, especially since Qin Shi Huangdi had destroyed many works during the Qin Dynasty. Uh, Sima Chen's work was called the Shi, Records of the Grand Historian. His style and format became the model for later historical writings. Okay, so it shows down here at the um, bottom. Oh, your, yours is bigger than mine. I like yours better. Um, the Chinese uh, says, okay, whatever. Seismoscope. I see. I, there we go. We said it. Um, how did the development of this invention help the Chinese? Um, tell, well, they just told us. To, tell the earthquakes. To, yeah, they felt that this was um, to help with the earthquakes. So echoes from the past. Um, do you have that in your paper? Okay, you do. Yeah. Okay, so paper. How many times a day do you use paper? Paper has become a part of everyday life. Newspaper, textbooks, labels, and money are just a few things that are made from paper. Do you even know what a newspaper is? Of course I do. Well, I'm just checking because some people don't, like when I was little, like that's what we got news on is a newspaper. Now people go onto Google. Everybody knows what a newspaper is. Not everybody, but okay. People did not always have paper to write on. Before paper was invented, the ancient Chinese used silk, bone, turtle shell, and other materials. Remember we talked about the um, oracle, bone oracle bones, uh -huh, and that was earlier in the chapter. All right, so, uh, so they used other materials to keep written records. And why do we keep written records? Why would we have written records? Why is that important? So people know what you were doing? Well, how could we have history, but we need written records, we have artifacts. They do it so people in the future know how they lived. There we go. Okay, just want to, I know that's not on here, but we want to make sure that we keep up with that. Okay, so Chinese invented paper during the Han Dynasty. They took hep, 
um, plant fiber. So that's what that is. Hep is the plant fiber. Okay. Um, so they took hep, plant fiber, or tree bark, and pounded it to a pulp. The pulp was mixed with water, then the mixture was spread into a thin layer. The dried pulp formed a coarse sheet of paper. Unlike today's paper, this early paper was difficult to write on. The paper also had other uses. It was used as wrapping for clothing or other items. It was also used for making lightweight armor. Uh, well, we'll see what exactly, probably like the layover, you know what I mean? Or maybe even under, I'm not sure. Well, I guess we'll have to see that. Arrows, oh, here we, there we go. Let's finish reading. Arrows could not penetrate through the armor's many layers of paper. So it'd be just like this. If I throw, you hold up one sheet of paper and I throw this pen at you, which hopefully I wouldn't throw a pen at you, you know, it's probably going to poke a hole and end up hitting you. But if I hold up a book of paper and I throw that at you, it's going to be harder to get through. Okay, yeah. Um, anyways, plus there's other things with that armor. So, um, arrows could not penetrate through the armor's many layers of paper. Chinese paper makers later used fiber from rags, rope, or fishing nets to make a smoother pulp. The Chinese continued to use paper for writing and eventually for making money. Remember, because last time we talked about the currency and um, how it, it wasn't paper. It was like a metal thing. It was metal and it was flat and remember it had the square in it yeah. so that it was easier for them to carry because it was that's, big. That's smart, you should put a hole in that money. <laughs> What's up we okay, can like? A gunk in your head, okay. This page you are reading is an echo of the ancient Chinese invention of paper, meaning paper. Meaning exactly what it says. Exactly. All right, let's go over what we just read and let's see. Um, so what made the Han era a glorious period? They accomplished many things. They did, yep. There were many achievements in medicine, manufacturing, science, and literature. And you're right, they accomplished many things. Okay, what medical treatments were common during the Han period? Acupuncture. Okay, uh, acupuncture and what else? If we first talked about it. What herbs. I, herbs, that's right, herbs and acupuncture. Um, why do people have acupuncture done? To relieve pain. To relieve pain and cure some, yep, yep. Can you speak up because we're recording this? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what achievement did the Chinese make that increased the production of goods? Mm. You remember we talked about mm -hmm. it? Think about it, perdunk, a perdunk, <laughs> a perdunk, it. the production of goods. What do you do? What's the production? Manufacturing. That's right. Manufacturing. Um, what had Chinese become masters at doing? Do you remember what we talked about? Um, Metalworking. So um, oh. we talked... Oh, Remember yeah. that? So oh, it says the I Chinese have that. become master metal workers. The iron plow and wheelbarrow increase production on farms. Yeah. yeah. Metal work. Or, yeah. Okay. So what two, what two ooh, tools increase production on farms? Wheelbarrows and plows. Iron plows. That's iron right. Plows. But plows, but yes, you would, it'd be iron plows. Um, what two tools made the armor more powerful? Metal and arm, iron. Um, iron. Okay, so um, I'm not really loving the way to ask this question, but so what two tools made the, oh, I'm sorry, I might have said it wrong. What two tools made the army more powerful. What oh, did the army, army, I think I said it. Swords so. and um, new armor. Per, yep, yep, yep. How did the rudder attached to the ship improve navigation? You could move it. That's right. So the rudder was used to turn the ship. So as they, the rudder would move, then the ship would turn. Yeah. Okay. What kind of cloth did the Chinese make from cocoons? So That's right. All right, so what were some of the achievements of the Han Dynasty? 
I know we went over it, but this is our focus question. Medicine, manufacturing, metalworking, making silk, making paper, mm -hmm. science. Mm -hmm. And you said it because you said, writing. yeah, writing, literature. Um, what did the Chinese keep written records on before the invention of paper? Oh, silk, turtle shells, bones, and something else. Other materials. Other materials. <laughs> that's, hey, that's something else. Okay. Um, so what important scientific instrument did, I, you're going to make fun of me, Shan... Shan Hing, Hing invent. I know I'm saying it wrong. I don't think I remember how to say that. I know. Chang I, Hing. Chang Hing. <laughs> I know I'm saying it wrong. We're gonna have to look it up later, just because. So I'm it's not in. It's the dummy. seismoscope. That's right. The seismoscope. What is a seismoscope? It's. How do I describe it? It's like. Okay, I'm not asking for what it looks like. What does it do? Oh. Oh, it it tells you about earthquakes, like where the location is, and then also also if one is happening. And an instrument that detects earthquakes. So, yep. Yeah. What device inside the jar caused the ball to drop? What? So I know that that the way it reads is weird. So in the seismoscope, it had. Um, something in there and the ball would drop and it would drop in remember the dog's how, mouth? yeah but what is that thing called that would make it when it would move do you remember it said vibrations it? yeah you know what this is kind of a weird thing um, a pendulum oh I'm not really that oh. worried about you remembering pendulum but you know what a pendulum is right mm -hmm. pendulum. Mm -hmm. oh yeah, yeah yeah okay how did an earthquake affect the seismoscope? It made the ball inside the dragon's neck Actually, this is why the pendulum is important, so you and I both missed it. Oh. Um, the pendulum moved and hit a dragon, which dropped the ball into the frog's mouth. So it's all about this seismoscope. Um, so the pendulum, if you look at the picture, oh, I see it. the pendulum, so as the, the earthquake would happen, it would make that, which, okay, now I get it. Okay, I'm learning here. Well, okay. Like See. I know, I was just going to tell you that. So what's happening is, so let's say that the earthquake is moving and things are shifting. Well, that pendulum is moving, so they're going to see how that pendulum is moving and where it, it shifts and moves and drops the ball and into whatever frog's mouth. I know. Okay. Well, let's figure that out right now. Okay, so pendulum is important. We just learned something new. Um how could the Chinese determine the direction of the earthquake from the seismoscope? Oh, because which, I think it's just which one um, drops. Yeah, so yeah, where where it's dropping, um, basically which frog had the ball in its mouth. But it's the same thing, whether you're going to call it a frog or whatever, it's where that ball was, where the pendulum moved to make that ball fall. Um, you're going to be able to find that location. Mm -hmm. So, um So, uh, here's something I don't know if you're going to know this right off, but we're going to go over it. So, it's giving us a caption answer. So, it says, they were able to determine on earthquakes location and send troops with food and supplies to help people. So, when they used that, it wasn't, it was for a couple different purposes. For one, um, you know, just like now, when we are trying to locate when earthquakes are going to happen. It's for a couple reasons. For one, it's to be prepared, but it's also to be able to, um, well, it's both preparedness, but one's prepared to be safe during the earthquake and one's to help after the earthquake, to be prepared to know where to go. Like, where are we going to send people for with help? You know what I mean? Just like right now with coronavirus, as we see these outbreaks happening, happening and the areas that are hitting harder, how are we sending people? Who are we helping first type thing? Okay, so same type of thing. Um, okay, what kinds of work were written during the Han Dynasty? Oh, poems. Poems? Yeah. 
poems, mm -hmm. literature, history, all of that. Um, what became the model for later historical writings? Poems. Um, you know what? This is the name you weren't, I don't think you're going to remember. They were talking about it, remember? Sima. Yes. Sima. Sima Chen. Uh huh. Work was called Chi Records of the Grand Historian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I so, um, okay, well, we're going to, oh, well, what were some other ways the ancient Chinese used paper? Armor. Armor? Armor. And then they also used it to write on, but it was difficult. Mm hmm. But for other than, than, um, Armor. Armor. What about wrapping clothing and certain things like that? Remember they said to wrap clothes, right? You know, do oh, different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember the um, early process of making paper? What they used and what... They used... What was it called? Hep? Hep. That's right. Hep. Plant fiber or tree bark. was. And what did they do with it? They... They pounded it into a pulp and they mixed the pulp with water and then, um, then I forgot. Let it dry out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spread into thin layers, but you, you know, okay. So, uh, was that paper easy or no. no, wasn't so easy. All right. And here's one, just one of those things. Do you know how we make paper today? We use trees. <laughs> yes. We use wood. Absolutely. Okay. We don't use wood. Well, what do you think honey trees are? We don't use wood. It's the... The, the, the sap the, you're talking about. Yeah. There, but there's... We use the wood, too. Hey, that's what my answer says. I'm going with it. <laughs> no, they do use wood for some of the stuff. Okay. So, um, all right. So, we answer our focus questions. We... I... Uh, went through all the things that we covered, and basically, um, I think you understand what these are. We covered the chapter. We're done with our history lesson for today, and um, I actually took the time, if it seems like, well, that's not very much. Are they really learning enough doing that? I can tell you right now, In um, I've been the room mom in both of my children's um, classes. I have one in college and one in sixth grade. And I was the room mom um, basically every school year. I started off being the room mom for my uh, college student from gay, uh, grade uh, first grade all the way up through when they didn't want me anymore in high school. And I did the same um, with this one. And I can tell you I've been in for computer classes, history classes, uh, math classes. I've helped in there. I've done parties. I've done these things. And I'm telling you what we went over right now in history is more teaching in history than they will do in that classroom. So I hope this helps you. We're going to do a couple short videos. Uh, this is just to kind of give you an example. Uh, it's not going to be an all day thing. Um, you're going to be able to do this. Um, I'm not a history teacher. I'm an accountant, um, not a history major. Uh, your children will be able to do this. You're going to find what works for you and um, reach out, ask for help. Uh, we're going to give you some examples down the road. We're going to do some short little video clips, but just know um, as long as you're spending time with your child and they're going through, through this, you can take breaks in the middle of it. If they don't get an answer right, um, you'll get breaks. Don't give me that crazy look. Um, anyways, I could tell by her movement what she was trying to say. Um, but these are all things that you're going to be able to do. Um, I encourage you just um, stay strong and um, just work with your children and it's going to work out. And I would encourage you um, in homeschooling. Like I said before, I was scared. Um, didn't know if I can do it. It's worked out super well. Um, I have asked her if she's wanted to go back into a private school um at home school is not a possibility for us i she did or i'm sorry homeschool um
Public school is not a possibility for us. She did home, uh, private school. Why can't I speak? She did private school pretty much um, up until fourth and fifth grades. Fourth no. grade. Yeah. No. Yes, you no. did half of fifth grade. Yes, you did. You said private school. I no. did private school until she third did. grade, and then I did public school fourth, and then I did half of fifth grade, and then through half of fifth grade, I went to the hybrid homeschooling. Yes, okay, so she did home, that's right. So she, but she went into public school in fourth grade. She did fourth grade in a public school, um, and they wanted to bump her up a year just because in being in the private school, um, she was um, ahead in, in that particular grade, but we did not want to bump her up. Um, she did half of a year in fifth grade in the public school. Uh, we had awesome teachers. She met great friends. Um, however, we just didn't feel she was getting um, some of the education we felt she needed, and we got involved in some things, and our schools are involved in some indoctrination. We just couldn't get behind, so I pulled her out. And we do a hybrid homeschool. So good luck. Um, look forward to um, having you watch some of our other short videos. And I hope this helps. Thank you. Say goodbye. Bye. Bye.